matcha, get the new white panna, with the brand new flavor, it's daddy for your tea. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Though you've likely never heard of him, Clinton's most famous resident, L.E.U. Root, was born in this house in 1845. After studying here at Hamilton College, Root went on to become one of America's most celebrated statesmen. His offices, awards, and honors are too many to all mention here, but among the most noteworthy are Secretary of State, Secretary of War, United States Senator, and recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. Can I? Do you mind? Cool. In addition to a lifetime of service to his country, Eliu Root raised three children who were accomplished in their own right. Eliu Root Jr. became a celebrated lawyer. Edward W. Root became an art professor here at Hamilton College. Daughter Edith Root married Ulysses S. Grant the third. Only nine miles away are what remains of the lunatic asylum of Utica. Opened in 1843, it was one of the nation's first government-run facilities for the mentally ill. The grandiose main building with its massive limestone Doric columns is now recognized as one of the world's finest examples of Greek Revival architecture. But what happened within these walls is far less celebrated and rarely discussed. The asylum's first director was A. Mariah Brigham who established a print shop at the asylum, where he first published the American Journal of Insanity, now known as the American Journal of Psychiatry. It was not long after the Utica Lunatic Asylum opened that it gave birth to one of the most loathsome practices of the 19th century. crib was a wooden adult-sized restraining bed equipped with a lid that locked the inmate inside with just enough space for them to roll over. All of the Utica cribs were designed to allow free-flowing air through the slats and the sides and the top. The inside would be lined with straw that would be changed routinely, much like an animal's cage. Over the course of several decades, many modifications were made on the original design of the Utica crib to include human cages that were suspended from the ceilings and others that stacked the inmates several cribs high. Left within the device for often days on end, the use of the Utica crib was widely criticized and infamous among the inmates. There are no records to indicate how many cribs were on site at any time, but its use spread quickly to other asylums. Did you scratch my nose? The last remaining Utica crib was removed from use in January of 1887, and the lunatic asylum now decays slowly from within. This isn't funny. 